This is Twit. This is just a great chart. The, uh, this is from the the Information is Beautiful uh, project, which, you know, demonstrates that if you... Uh, graph things in creative ways, you can learn a lot. And this is a perfect example of that. 3.4 million four-digit pins, which were obtained from multiple data breaches, were aggregated. Um, now, you know, this is a wonderfully enlightening graphic chart that I want to share. Unfortunately, the terms graphic chart and listeners are at odds. So, <laughs> you know, you're going to have to describe it, note, Steve. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to note that this delightful chart is at the top of this week's show notes. Yeah. Uh, need to see I it. tweeted It'll it yeah. and I, I gave it a permanent GRC shortcut of PIN, P I N. So anybody can see it at any time. From at grc.sc slash pin, P I N. Okay, but, you know, I can do this verbally also. Um, okay, so this chart, as I said, takes 3.4 million four digit pins, which were recovered from and disclosed by multiple data breaches. Um, now, of course, a four digit pin can have any value between 0000 and 9999. So there are 10,000 possible pins. And this wonderful chart contains 10,000 little itty bitty squares arranged in a flat two dimensional map. So it's got rows, you know, it's got 100 rows and 100 columns. And of course, 100 times 100 is 10,000. So one way to think of this is that the first two digits of the pin, which, you know, 00 through 99, specify one axis, and the last pair of digits specify the other. So every single possible four-digit pin has its own square on this chart. And within this 3.4 million pin data set, the relative number of times Every single possible pin appears in the data set determines the brightness of its square on the chart. Okay, so what do we learn from this? Okay, possibly the most prominent feature is a bright diagonal line running from the lower left corner of the chart where both of the first two and the last two digits are zero, zero to the chart's upper right corner, where the first two and the last two digits are both nine nine. The diagonal line then is formed by all of the intermediate squares where their first two and last two digits are identical. You know, and naturally, like zero zero in the far lower left, that's bright because a lot of people just chose zero 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 as their pin. And similarly, the very far upper right corner, also very bright because nine 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 is, you know, many people's pins. So there is, you know, some variation in the brightness along the diagonal, which is interesting, you know, and of course, human nature being what it is, the pin 6969 appears to be overrepresented relative to its neighbors. No surprise. Two other solitary bright spots would also not surprise anyone. They are the locations of the 1234 and 4321 pins. Not very creative and thus bright on the map. Another really interesting prominent line is the 20th line from the up from the bottom. Since lines are numbered from zero, the 20th line is the line for all pins beginning with 19. And what's so interesting is that the line gets gradually brighter as it moves to the right, then dims a bit toward the end and wraps around a bit to the 20 to the, the 20 line on the left. So what's going on here? Well, if you guessed people's birth year, you would be correct. Pins often begin, it turns out, with 19. 
and they appear to be brightest or somewhere around 1980 seems to be the the place where it it's most uh you know, most people have their pins clustered there. A lot of a lot of forty year olds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's just ter- I would have Another thought it would notable- be the baby boomers that would be the brightest, but maybe not. Yeah, it's kind of fading out for yeah. us, Leo. Yeah. And, uh, on the other hand, then so are we. Yes. Um, yeah. Another notable feature is a generally brighter region down at the lower left of the chart. This would be where both the first two and the last two digits form low numbers. Okay, why? Because people use their month and day of birth within the month, running from 1 to 12, of course, for the month, and then day of month 1 through 31. There's, and, with, and what's interesting, there's a brighter horizontal stopping at 12, than the vertical stopping at 12, both which, however, are clear. This indicates that most people chose the ordering with the month first and the, and the day of month second as their pin. Now, stepping way back from it and looking at the overall illumination, there's a, there's a top to bottom brightness variation. Um, with it being brighter at the top and 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 dimmer toward the bottom, suggesting that most pins have low starting numbers, but there's less left to right variation. So people are generally choosing four digit pins with, as I said, smaller first two digits, but for some reason more randomly distributed last two digits. Oops. And the final really interesting observation is that whereas most of the chart shows varying shades of illumination, there are around 40 distinct cells that are black or nearly black. Like, I mean, dramatic contrast against their neighbors. In other words, out of all 10,000 possible four-digit pins... There are around 40 of those that are significantly underrepresented. Isn't that weird? For, isn't that is so odd? Yeah. It For looks some reason. Kind of randomly distributed, but maybe not. Yeah, well, it's well, mo- most of them have high. Yeah, uh, mostly above almost 60. all of them are. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, almost all of them are in the upper third of the chart. Huh. So their first two digits are, are larger. Yeah. Um, for some reason, for example, very few people have chosen 6806. So, if you're looking for a lesser chosen four-digit pin, there you <laughs> go. <on> in there. <laughs> That's right. Or 68, and, whatever this one is. You know, it's interesting. There are three dots on the 68 line. Yeah, and, and in fact, that first one on the 68 line was the 6806 that I just chose to highlight. But yeah. you're right. That, uh, that, and there looks like there's also three on the 60 or on the 70 line. Yeah. Huh. I mean, How it's, odd it's, is that? it's really non-random in, in, that, in that area. Okay, so, and as for the extremely low entropy skewing observed in the data set again low entropy skewing get this just the top 20 the top 20 most used pins out of remember the 10,000 that are possible right just the top 20 account for 27 oh. percent of all <laughs> pins observed in oh, use that's terrible those top 20 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 7, 7, 7, 7, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 2, 2, 2, 9, 9, 9, 9, 5, 5, 5, 5, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 8, 8, 8, 8, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 6, 9, 6, 9, 3, 3, 3, 3, 6, 6, 6, 6, 1, 3, 1, 3, 4321 and 1010. If any of those so, sound like your pins, you're in <laughs> trouble. <laughs> yeah, just very, very but cool. It means you so, can guess, you know, 10 or 20 and have a one in four chance of being right. 
Right. Um, if, 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 for example, something prevented you from brute forcing all 10,000, you would absolutely want to go for those 20 yeah. as your first as your first 20 guesses. You, it also and means you should use more than four digits in your pin, right? Yeah, though. Yeah, though. I so I think we're still at, at four digit pins purely for historical reasons. It's just, you know, it's because that's, you know, once upon a time, we didn't have computers and people had to actually remember them. And I'm sure a lot of people used, you know, their month and day of birth or the last four digits of their social security number or, you know, digits from their license plate or, you know, something. The point being four digits that was all they could actually remember. We didn't have technology to say, oh, yeah, you know, here, here's a string of 20 digits, you know, re repeat after me. Pick something, you know, what I always do is I pick the last four digits of a phone number, not my current phone number. But maybe my childhood phone number or phone number I particularly recommend rec remember because those are mostly pretty random. They certainly don't have anything to do with my birth date. Uh, I don't know. It's, or just pick something random. You can remember four digits or better yet, use an alphanumeric password, not a PIN. Yeah. Well, and of course, so, uh, back one, once upon a time... Oh, no, I, I was going to say, once upon a time, we were keying them into our touch-tone phones in order to authenticate oh, ourselves. Yeah, right. But even then, you know, unless you used Q, I think, was it was Q missing? I think Q was missing. Q there was, was missing, that's right. <laughs> there were a couple of things that were not well, you there. You know where on, these on, are on. mostly still used is on ATM machines. I don't know of any ATM machine that uses more than four digits. Yeah. Right. So, Again, because there's some back end, some old creaky keypad. back end yeah. machine that could only take four digits. Yep. Anyway, this was a huge win for our audience who got a big kick out of it. So again, if you want to see what we were talking about, grc.sc slash pin, and that will bounce you over to my site. I grabbed the, it, I actually could have just pointed to it. Uh, the original source was over on Reddit and then I think I got tweeted to me, but I was afraid that that might not last, you know, that could disappear. So I grabbed it and stuck it on GRC server just because it's just a, such a cool infographic. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below. <laughs>